I gotta be honest, I have a bit of a problem. Some might even call it an addiction. Around this time of year, it gets harder and harder, and I start acting real reckless. I absolutely love Hack 5's pen testing tools. And once Black Friday comes around and they start throwing out all these crazy sales that they have, I lose my damn mind. And I know I'm not the only one. There's actually a group of us. We actually have a support group where we get together and we try to console each other and then also push each other to go spend money that we probably don't need to be spending. But if you fall into that group, this video today is for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you. So I'm gonna do a breakdown of all of the Hack 5 tools that I have. I think I have every single one except for the OMG cable. So we're gonna do a high level breakdown of all of these. So at least if you suffer from the same affliction that I do, you at least can make an informed decision when it comes to whatever your next Hack 5 tool is gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna go grab all my Hack 5 tools and we're just gonna hop into this, all right. Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here, back with another Cyber Insight video. It's been a minute since we've actually done a video that's not a live stream, but I figured that this was an important one that I wanted to put together for all of my fellow Hack5 friends out there. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about all of the different products in Hack5's pen testing product line. Uh, gonna do a little bit of a high level overview of each of those. This isn't gonna be really an in-depth how to configure and how to use it in different types of scenarios type of video. Uh, if you are interested in any of those, check out some of the previous ones I've done, some of the previous blog posts I've done. And if there's any other particular tools that you're interested in seeing a more in-depth breakdown, throw that down in the comments down below. So as always, before we hop over into the actual meat and potatoes of the video, Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, all that other types of good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go jump into it. All right, so I'm gonna go through the Hack5 website and kind of talk a little bit about all of these different products. Um, as I mentioned before, I actually have most of these. Uh, I think the only thing that I haven't bought yet is the uh, OMG cable. And really I haven't decided <laughs> which form factor it is that I really wanna go after. So we're gonna take a, a little look high level at what they have and then go a little bit more in depth into each of these tools. As we kind of go through it, if I have them, I'll throw them up um, and we'll kind of just go at it that way. So let's see. So if we just go to the Hack5 website, you see they already got their Hack November sale going on. This is really dangerous. This is where I normally get in trouble. Um, and if we look, actually, I think the way that they kind of have this broke down, which actually looks a little bit, uh, a little bit better is, uh, let's see, if we go into products, we have Wi-Fi pen testing up here. It looks like I'm kind of, uh, over that corner there. So you're just going to have to trust me there. And we got the Wi-Fi pineapples, then hot plug attacks and implants, remote access. Another cool thing that they have for a lot of these and we'll probably hit it up a few times, is they have a remote command and control uh, tool that you can use called Cloud C2. This is actually free. It integrates with a lot of these different tools so that whenever you're using them, you actually can either remotely manage them or pull data off of them uh, back to this particular cloud instance, which is pretty cool. And here we have a little bit more of uh, a look at these from a high level perspective as far as what they have, just graphically nice to see that there. But yeah, let's just hop into this. I think the first one that, we, uh, that we'll hit up probably will be the Wi-Fi pineapple. So we'll start with the Wi-Fi stuff first, then hit the hot plug uh, attacks and then the implants and uh, remote access. So the first one that we're gonna do is the Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, it's a rogue wireless access point. You might've have already have seen it on Silicon Valley before. I kind of just hit this, let this cycle through here as we're kind of talking about it. Um, it's kind of 
It has a pretty decent web GUI, as you can kind of see from the video that's going through there. And you can use it for a whole bunch of different types of surveillance or actual Wi-Fi attacks. You can use it for DDoS attacks. Uh, it can become a captive portal. Uh, there's a there's an app store. I don't want to use the word store necessarily, but the, you have the ability to go and pull down different types of apps to integrate with it to allow you to do uh, different types of attacks. They did just recently, I think it was a year or two ago, come out with like a, a newer version. Um, I don't have the uh, Mark 7, I have the, the one before that. As we kind of mentioned, uh, you know, it's a rogue access point. You can do different types of enterprise attacks, whether you're attacking uh, WPA, uh, handshakes, uh, we talked about it being captive portal. You can do uh, triggering based off of specific Macs or uh, SSIDs, which is important when you're trying to maintain the scope of uh, what you're allowed to actually test against. Let's see if there's anything else that's really, <coughs> really worth bringing up here. Advanced Reconnaissance. This is one of the tools that actually allows you to connect back to C2. So you can uh, manage this remotely, which is pretty cool. And here they kind of have just a, a little bit of a breakdown on uh, the actual technical specs of the box itself. I have not used the Enterprise version at all. Um, so the fact that it has eight antennas on there uh, is pretty wild, should be pretty strong. And here they kind of talk about some of the refinements that they've done. So this is definitely one of those uh, Hack5 tools that uh, it's pretty easy to test out. I mean, you can use it on your own network at home, obviously. Uh, don't use it against your neighbors. Uh, and I think you'd probably be, uh, be pretty good to go. So in moving into the hot plugs, the first one that we're gonna uh, be looking at is the rubber ducky. You've probably seen the rubber ducky before. Uh, I think this one was actually used in Mr. Robot. I think that I have one around here somewhere. Yep, there we go. Have that rubber ducky here. So the cool thing with the rubber ducky is that uh, it pretty much is a keystroke injection tool and it uses simple configuration using what they call the ducky script. Now this is a good thing to point out uh, when it comes to the Hack5 tools that a lot of them use kind of this simple uh, scripting language. And normally when you go and you buy these, uh, they have a whole bunch of different books that actually lay out uh, how to install, how to use it, how to create payloads. Um, really, really beneficial. And I think a lot of times, especially during the holidays, they give those books away for free. Um, I think normally they're like 10 bucks. It's pretty much the same information that you'll be able to find on uh, their website, generally speaking, and on the forums and their install documentation, all that type of stuff. But me personally, I just like having a uh, paper book, honestly, a physical book that I can kind of flip through, take notes. Um, I don't know, but I'm old school, I guess. But uh, yeah, just a little bit more, uh, or I have a little bit of an easier time kind of following a process through a book than kind of flipping through multiple web pages. So just something to think about if you are actually uh, in the market for one of these. So kind of talk about what you can do with that. Uh, looks like a normal USB drive uh, and it's, you can, you know, install different types of backdoors, exfil documents, capture credentials via keystrokes. Let's see if there's anything else on here that's really worth mentioning. Kind of talked about Ducky Script, simple language. You can kind of see how this is is laid out here. The nice thing with most of these Hack Five tools is that the um, the community support within their forums is excellent as well. So they kind of point you in the right direction as far as some very, very simple things that you can use that you know, more often than not are going to be what you want to do. Um, but if you have some more advanced stuff that you're trying to do, um, normally you can just throw that up on the forums and, and people are pretty uh, receptive to trying to help you out uh, with what it is that you want to do as long as it's something that the device actually uh, can do. So kind of taking uh, the idea of something that's kind of on one of these USB devices and taking a little bit further, we have the Bash Bunny, um, which actually runs uh, on Debian. 
and allows you to do uh, a whole bunch of different types of things. You can deploy payloads, you can run other types of Linux pen test tools. I think you can, you know, install Metasploit, Responder, and Map. Uh, it does have the ability to capture data and pull that off. Uh, in Hack5 terminology, they refer to that as loot, and that will uh, be saved to a micro SD uh, memory card that's on the device. This is another tool that actually uses the Ducky script, so that makes things uh, kind of easy. Uh, and uh, it can mimic multiple types of devices, so you could have it mimic a keyboard or Ethernet adapter. And uh, another nice or interesting feature with this one is it allows you to actually uh, remotely trigger it via Bluetooth. talked about different types of, of the payloads that you can do different type of stuff mentioned the fact that's on Debian there you go kind of showing you the the micro SD card that you can slide in there to get your your loot off of there uh, supports geofencing and remote triggers seven second boot up pretty cool See if there's anything else kind of in here. Ducky script. It's always as you start to play through these. Um, yeah, finding other scripts that people have already written is definitely the way to go to kind of uh, get a feeling for uh, how these are laid out or the scripts that actually already come on some of these tools. I have a few different versions you can look at. kind of covered the same type of thing so the fact that you have pretty much a usb device that's you know running debian on there is is pretty awesome and it allows you to uh go a lot further than what you could normally do with the, the regular rubber, rubber ducky the next tool that we're looking at here is the shark jack now I've, I've actually done a uh blog post on this before so i'll actually throw that in the description for the video um if we want to actually check that out we can go real quick shark jack should come right up the baby yoda of network attack tools i had a lot of fun going through this so if you actually do want an in-depth breakdown of what the shark jack is how to configure it different things that you can do with it this is a pretty good blog post uh, if i can say so myself <laughs> so uh just from a a high level when it comes to uh, the shark jack really uh, what is it it's you plug it into wired network and use it for network auditing so it can uh, it runs on Linux so you can use uh, scripting uh, with known tools so you can use nmap and things like that you're able to save loot this is another tool that is also c2 manageable um, so pretty much the purpose of this is to plug it into a network and, you know, run different types of scanning to try to get different types of enumeration uh, data off of a network, uh, especially something where you're able to plug it in. There's no port security. You can kind of see what's on that particular um, layer three network. The nice thing with this is right out of the box, it already comes with uh, the basic NMAP payloads. Um, so you can pretty much plug it in and just start getting information off the network right away. Mentioned that uh, it does run Linux under the hood and with that you actually can SSH into it um, for remote access, which is kind of cool. And again, uh, Cloud C2 ready as well. I think I, can, I think I have that one around here somewhere. I mean, you can see pretty small. Super, super tiny. Just ready to go. The arming sequence is there on the side. You can flip that back and forth depending upon what you're trying to do with it. And kind of talk about some of the different featured payloads. So whether or not you're just using it for SSH access into it, internet access tester, getting IP info, 
the sample nmap payload that you can use right off the bat. You can obviously modify that as well for other types of nmap uh, configurations. So the next one that we're looking at is a plunderbug. This apparently is sold out. It's a packet sniffer. Let's see if we actually have, they don't actually have a video that we can run through here. In essence, it's just a, uh, a tap to be able to capture packets on the LAN. And then uh, you can just plug that into an app that's running um, on a different device. I believe it uses uh, USB-C, I think. Yes, USB-C connection. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of just straightforward as far as uh, active and passive capabilities for uh, sniffing traffic uh, in a lane environment. All right, so this is going to move us over into the implant section, and uh, the first one that we're going to be hitting up here is the key croc. Now, as I mentioned, I had actually done a uh, video breakdown on YouTube on the key croc. Um, really, really cool tool. Actually, uh, Darren sent me one right when it was just coming out. And I was able to do a review on it. Uh, really enjoyed kind of getting my hands into that for the first time. Uh, so it's a key logger that you can use to trigger payloads. Again, using the, the Ducky 2.0 or Ducky Script 2.0. Um, so you can trigger payloads based off of key sequences that are typed in, right? So for a really simple uh, example of that is it will start capturing uh, keystrokes if it recognizes, uh, I don't know, the sequence of somebody typing in control alt delete, right? So you would normally see that in a scenario, somebody types that in when they're about to log into their computer, that will start capturing um, payload to end up, you know, doing the logging to get their credentials for that. It's another uh, tool that they have that runs uh, off of Debian, which means that it can also run other uh, Linux tools. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi antenna, so you can actually be able to remotely uh, manage it that way over Wi-Fi. And again, that feeds back into kind of this overarching principle that they have of a lot of these tools being able to be monitored and managed via their um, C2 uh, cloud tool. Let's see if there's anything else that's kind of worth pointing here. So it can do obviously the capturing of the key loads, but there's, it can also trigger other types of payloads. The other interesting thing with it is that it actually will uh, emulate uh, the type of device that's being plugged in. So that actually can make it a little bit uh, difficult to be able to detect from a uh, blue team perspective. So here is kind of an example what we we're talking about, like it's gonna match, control, alt, delete, and then it's gonna um, save that in that text file. Talked about C2 ready. Pretty simple configuration to set it up. Because again, as I mentioned, it is actually running Linux. Plug and play, detects evasion because it clones the hardware identifiers. I think we kind of hit everything else with that. But yeah, very, very cool tool. If you actually want to see my video breakdown on it, if we just go I think we have it, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, you can check that out. I'll throw that in the description of the video as well, just so you can, you can go uh, find that. I think that is probably it for the key croc. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one we got under the uh, implants and remote access tools is the packet squirrel. The man in the middle that's nuts for networks. I mean, hey, if you can't trademark that, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> so as I mentioned, it's a man in the middle device. This is another one that uses the, um, the ducky script, captures packets uh, can actually uh, spoof DNS traffic so you can use it for main in the middle types of attacks. Um, it also has a VPN capability uh, via OpenVPN. 
Again, this is another tool set that is um, C2, or Cloud C2 manageable. Um, so that makes it pretty useful. They kind of go through some different scenarios of different types of folks that might want to uh, use this type of device, whether it's system administrators, to be able to capture uh, PCAP on the network, pen testers, you can gain persistence, um, use VPN access out of the environment if you need to, um, perform man in the middle attacks. Could also use it, uh, this is a pretty interesting use case, could also use it as a hardware firewall and VPN router, uh, since it uses OpenVPN to uh, tunnel back to wherever you want to go. Uh, again, Ducky script, pretty good. Different types of net modes, whether we're NAT, VPNs, or MAC address cloning. Yeah, pretty pretty cool tool. I actually haven't played around uh, with this one yet. Um, so, hey, if this is one that uh, you might want a more in-depth breakdown of, let me know what you want to see, and we can definitely set that up. Now, this next one is a screen crab. This is another one that I've done a uh, blog review on. Uh, let's just see. This one is actually uh, pretty cool. And I have that around here. That one around here as well. As I mentioned, so it's, a, it's an inline tool. Uh, and you kind of put it in between uh, whatever the monitor is uh, and the device that's uh, the source for that monitor. You can kind of see that in this case we went through all of the setup and how to protect against it. So again, I'll throw this link uh, in the uh, description for the video as well. This is another tool that uses a uh, micro SD card to save the loot. So pretty much what it's gonna be doing is taking um, screenshots or images of what it sees passing through it. You can also manage and monitor this one uh, via uh, the Cloud C2 as well. So you can actually pull those images off of it uh, via the Cloud uh, C2 solution. Pretty much, you're just telling it how often you want it to uh, to take uh, an image, or actually, it'll do video as well. Whatever the capture interval is, how long you want it to uh, store it for, overwrite captures in full uh, 1080p. Yeah, pretty pretty cool uh, tool. That would be something if you were on a pen test. Maybe you would just like put this maybe in a conference room or something like that, which I think is kind of where where they were going with that there. Now this next one is the uh, Signal Owl. I got one of these, actually I think I have a couple of these. And uh, for whatever reason, they aren't selling it on the website anymore. Um, but the purpose of this tool uh, is signal analysis. So uh, you can do stuff with Wi-Fi or GPS or Bluetooth. Um, and you can do different types of uh, payload deployment with that. And I think we even have a, yeah, there's a little, a little video here. Uh, so you can go and check this out on uh, Hack5's YouTube page if you want to see that. Don't really know how much it's worth going too far into it if they aren't selling it anymore, but... Uh, yeah, if you're looking for something that you're able to use uh, Kismet or uh, I'm trying to think what else you could use on the air crack, I think. Um, yeah, go, go check that out. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's something that they'll bring back or maybe it's something that they've just kind of rolled into some other tools. So I was going to hop over into the OMG cable, but I forgot to mention uh, the land turtle. I actually have one of these as well. This is another tool that is sold out. Um, I actually haven't used that, uh, so I'm not too sure exactly. So obviously you can do man in the middle type of stuff. Looks like a pretty easy type of setup here, um, although it's 
not necessarily, it doesn't look like it's using the ducky script. This might be something that was an older thing that they've kind of updated with their, um, their other tool sets. Do back doors, man in the middle. You can kind of look at the different types of uh, tools that they have their DNS spoofing. Open VPN and map scan. Yeah, Meterpreter. So it kind of looks like um, the type of stuff that we could do maybe with the Bash Bunny. Um, but maybe uh, the Bash Bunny allows you a bit more flexibility than this did back in the day. But anyway, uh, so that will allow us to move into the last one, uh, which is the OMG cable. This is the only tool that I actually, um, I don't have one of these. And uh, I'm gonna get one <laughs> at some point. I have to figure out exactly uh, which form factor it is that we're gonna, that I wanna go with. Um, you can do a whole bunch of different stuff with it. So it can do keystroke injection, key logging, um, Wi-Fi, which is absolutely nuts. Has the ability to uh, self-destruct different types of remote triggering. Um, as you can see that they have a whole bunch of different types of versions depending upon uh, what you need it for. And most of them have uh, the same uh, additional features, although you have some that do key logging and some that don't. Yeah, the fact that this is packed with a web server and uh, 802.11 radio to me is just absolutely wild. I mean, that's really, really cool. trigger payloads at over uh, two kilometers range. Nuts. So yeah, definitely looking forward to getting one of these and, and trying that out. All right, so I think that that wraps it up. I think we hit all of the different tools that I wanted to mention. I hope that this uh, video gave you a little bit of help uh, in your challenges and problems and addictions when it comes to uh, Hack5 tools. As I mentioned, you know, I, I struggle with this every year, especially when it comes around uh, to Black Friday as far as they always throw something new out and I'm always drawn to go and get it. So um, at least with this, it'll give you a little bit of a, a more high level view of what all of these different tools are. Maybe some ways where you can go and check out some additional uh, breakdowns. And if nothing else, then maybe it will make you uh, consider recommending me doing some more in-depth videos on some of the other tools that I haven't done yet. So as always, I appreciate everybody checking out the stream. Smash a like button, subscribe notify for uh, when the videos come out, share it with your friends, all that type of good stuff. Um, go get at it and we will talk soon. All right, bye.